is a lost sinner, I don't care how religious they are, how many candles they light, how many Hail Marys they can pray, how, how you know, many, you know, in these Eastern religions, these uh, little prayer things they can chant, they can become a monk, they can give every, everything they have in life. I don't care how religious they are, apart from a saving faith in Jesus Christ, the Bible says they are spiritually dead. They can't touch God. They can't know God. They can't have fellowship with God. And see, it's only now on this side of the fall as we come to saving faith in Jesus Christ and we, we place our faith and trust in Him, this new birth experience happens and we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. It's as if now our spirit, that spark of life, is energized. God breathes into our spiritual nostrils the breath of life and now we can have fellowship with God. See, that's how the study of even the creation of Adam and Eve impacts our Christian faith. What happened to them physically must have to happen to us spiritually. If we're ever to come in right relationship with God and know Him and pray to Him and receive of Him and be blessed by Him and walk with Him and talk with Him as that song says and, and, and have God within us and by us and through us constantly every day in our life. Perfect fellowship involves creation. We become a new creation in Christ Jesus and it involves the life-giving breath of God as He breathes into our spiritual nostrils, spiritual love. The second thing I want you to see in this passage of Scripture is that perfect fellowship with God involves provision. As part of His fellowship with us, God has promised to provide for our needs. He's our Heavenly Father. He provides for the needs of His children, including the need for fellowship. Let's talk about how He's done this. Well, first of all, He, he knew we had physical needs. So He placed Adam and Eve, Adam first in that Garden of Eden, had all those trees that grew all that precious fruit, I'm sure there were many vegetables that also were, were, were grown. I don't think at, at this time Adam was going to kill and eat meat. There was going to be no death. Things would live forever. But he provided for man's sustenance. He, he provided beauty in that garden of Eden. It was a paradise. Karen and I are still dreaming of our Hawaiian paradise vacation. When I get there, I'll sing blue water. <laughs> I mean, you go and you see the ocean coming in, that, you know, the, the, the white sandy shores, the palm trees, the perfect temperature, the beauty of God's creation. And you can you know, sit out there and walk along the beach and feel the, the wind on your face and hear the waves rolling in. And you're, you're just at peace. It's serene. It's a refreshing. We long for that. I think somehow in the heart of man, we long for such a thing because we, we miss it. God created man to live in such a paradise that was part of His provision, beauty. God also, as we have read in this passage of Scripture, knew that man needed earthly fellowship. Yes, God had created all the animal kingdom. Adam was given the job of naming all these animals, but none of them were suitable for him to have fellowship with because he was on a higher plane. I'm sorry, Mr. Ph.D. scientist, to think man is just an animal. Man is above the animal creation. Man is a special creation of God. And I think the reason he delayed in creating Eve and brought all these animals by for Adam and name was to teach him they weren't for that kind of intimate fellowship. There should be something more. And we read in our Bibles just a moment ago that God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, opened up his side. Had a Bible professor at Jackson State University just totally made fun of all this. 
But it's true. I'm sorry. He can have all the PhDs he wants to, and it can't change the truth of the Word of God. But God took that, that piece of bone and flesh out of the side of Adam and fashioned a woman and presented her to the man. You know, I've heard this preached. I, I, I really believe it's true in the Hebrew where it says, uh, now, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. That word now might should have really been translated why. Wow. <laughs> God presented Eve to Adam and he said, Why? Wow. <laughs> that was original creation. She was the perfect match, the perfect mate, the perfect companion. And if they had lived in sinless perfection, there would have ever been an argument. There would have ever been a disagreement. There would have ever been somebody pouting and turning away. There would have ever been somebody neglecting and you know abusing and anything else that we find in our earthly homes. Many times even in Christian homes, none of that would have ever happened because there wouldn't have been any sin. It would have been a perfect, loving, absolutely thrilling relationship forever. And that's really how God intends in our best it can be in our sinful state for marriage to be. God has provided for our need of fellowship. But let me reveal this truth to you. Some don't get it. I don't care how beautiful your wife is, how handsome your husband may be, what a perfect provider, a perfect mate, a, a, a perfect companion they can be. The fellowship with them that you may share that is a gift from God <coughs> is not enough. They can't make you perfectly happy in this life because there's this thing in the heart of man. It's his spirit that needs to connect with God. And you can have all the things in the world, all the trinkets, all the wealth, all the houses, all the land. But I'm telling you, living that kind of lifestyle will not bring ultimate contentment and fulfillment in your life. You, 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 you can have fellowship with the waves, fellowship with the sand, fellowship with the boat, fellowship with your wife, fellowship with innumerable friends, and you're still going to feel an emptiness in life. And God has also provided a way for you to have fellowship with Him. That's His ultimate provision in this life. And it's something that we should hunger for and thirst for and desire above all else in our life. It even setting all other things aside to make sure our relationship with God is what it ought to be. That's perfect fellowship. It involves God's provision of Himself along with everything else He gives as a way to make us fulfilled and happy and joyous in life. Third thing I want you to see in this passage of Scripture is that perfect fellowship with God involves responsibility. God, as you'll read in the little notes, God has given us the responsibility of carrying out productive work at His direction. And let me say this, work is not a curse. It's not part of the curse of the fall. It's a blessing. Man was going to have to work whether he fell or not. Because one of the worst things that can ever happen is for you to go to that perfect Hawaiian paradise, sit on The worst thing is for that to happen to you and then all purpose in life disappears and there's nothing productive for you to do. Talk to a man today. He's here who I, I made fun of. Must be nice to retire. I'm going to be about 80 or 85 by the time I can do that. And he's not quite that old. And I said, it must be nice to be able to retire. And he said, well, I'm more busy now than I've ever been in my life. 